Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the Glossa channel. It is the 17th of June 2021. It has been a very long day for all of us. In fact, it's stretching out into a long evening. But we have a lot to talk about. We have some good news and some bad news. Now, I want to welcome going around the table from the left, Sol Miller, Brady Gunn and Janine House. How are you all doing this evening? Good, Robert. Thanks. Good. The enthusiasm was palpable. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fire up, don't worry. Good, good. It has been a long day and, as I said, a long evening. Now, we had a matter in the High Court of Australia today which was uh, being driven by Sol Millen, to my left. So I believe there's been some problems with the court case so far. Information is actually scant in terms of the results that you've received. I mean, they've certainly given you a decision, a determination, an outcome, but I think it's left you wanting for a bit more information. Well, it, it's, it's so scant, it, it's, it's just surprising. You know, the High Court of Australia, which is our ultimate court of appeal, to come up with a statement that says the application that I made to the High Court raises no issues that would warrant an order for removal to the High Court. I, I'm just staggered by that statement and I can read you uh, passages from two documents which show enormous information about treason, about false uh, emergencies, uh, statements of fact, statements of law. And in, in, in a court of law, if you have one aspect that has merit, the case should be heard and they have thrown the entire lot out of the High Court and put it back in the Magistrates' Court, the Melbourne Magistrates' Court. So you have attempted to get this into the HCA, the High Court of Australia, which of course is I the did. highest court in the land. They have, have they rejected, dismissed the matter outright, or have they said go back to a lower court? Outright. This application raises no issues that would warrant an order for removal and would otherwise fragment the criminal proceedings and that's the proceedings in the Magistrates Court. Uh, I, I just, I'm speechless at this, at this disposition. So why don't, why don't you give us a little bit of a lead up as to how we got to the High Court and what's in it? Well, I was arrested twice uh, for protesting and for alleged incitement against the Chief Health Officer of Victoria. And, um, my, I, I was, uh, my um, home was raided, all my stuff was taken, my computers, my mobile phones, everything, PA and so on. Uh, given, I'm still on bail as it stands now. And uh, then I gave a long interview to the police on that first occasion and published it because I felt it was my right. And I was arrested again for publishing the uh, the interview. And so there are two cases in the Melbourne Magistrates Court. Right? The first case for incitement, I applied, uh, as I have the right under Australian law, for the uh, questions of law to be adjudicated by the High Court. And we have a whole list of them. There's about 23 questions of very damning evidence that the Victorian government is, is uh, creating treason and breaking the constitution. Now, none of those matters have been accepted by the High Court. None. And uh, then it so happened that I was lucky enough for the Victorian government to say there were no facts in their response, which gave me the opportunity to put the questions of facts that there is a false emergency there is no science, there is no statistics that there's an emergency in Australia. On the contrary, it is a total con. And there are numerous facts that were given, questions of fact, which the High Court has thrown out totally. I, I just don't understand who these people are, who are the, high, the, the, the judges in the High Court. What interest do they have in the rights of Australians? 
It's unbelievable. Well, I think all of you have been involved in uh, expressing or voicing your concerns regarding coronavirus. It's been with us for 18 months now. I've interviewed all of you individually for the Glosser Channel. We've all known each other for a while now. Maybe going around the table, Brady, beginning with you, Brady, can I get your opinion on what has happened to Seoul today? I know we can't perhaps speak completely as openly as we want to. We can't divulge every, everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm talking to the right guy. <laughs> Seoul can't. They'll arrest him again. He's on bail. Again. I can say whatever I like. Oh, look, the, the law's gone out the window. It's a, it's, a, it's a sad and dangerous day when the High Court of Australia can't uphold what's right. This is a very, very, very slippery slope from here for us as a society, community members, individuals, family members. And if you're playing a game of football with people who are moving the post to mid-game, what chance do you have? And that's what we're watching here right now. That, that is an open and shut case. This is one of the most trees that any of us have ever witnessed. The world has ever witnessed is what happened in, is what's happening in Victoria. It is horrible. It is the fourth rock. And when the laws of the land can't see that and fight for what's right for us, then we are in, we are in, we are in the fourth rock. Now, Janine, going around the table again, like I said, you've been interviewed by the Glosser Channel several times. You've actively voiced your concerns and fears about coronavirus and what the future may hold. Can I get your opinion on what has happened today? I know you don't really specialise in matters pertaining to courts of law, but do you have some perspective on, on what's happened? Were you expecting something like this to occur, or were you hoping for better news than what we received? Oh, look, I was up front, I was hoping for better news. I, I just can't believe that they have just dismissed all 23 points of fact that law. of law that Seoul has put to them regarding uh, the state of emergency. I can't believe that they've dismissed the case outright. I was hoping for uh, better things from our High Court of Australia. However, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised because um, it seems that we have been taken over, our, our governments have been taken over illegally by an entity that has um, it is completely dismissing our constitutions and dismissing our human rights. And this uh, action that has just happened today just proves that point. So that is something that I've raised in previous um, interviews with you. But you raise an interesting point in saying that Seoul had 23 points before the courts. It wasn't one, it wasn't two, it was almost two dozen. And plus the questions of fact. Plus the questions of fact. And in fact, I'll, I'll read you one of the additional questions of law we put, which your listeners will find very interesting. Totally dismissed by the kind court. Not interested, no issues, go back to the magistrate's court, Mr. Miller. What would you do now? They're telling you go back to the magistrate's court, go back to your local court down on the street corner. But do you have a right of appeal? Are you going to pursue well, this? You would think so. In general terms, with the High Court of Australia, if there is a judgment, you do have a right of appeal. Um, so I wrote to them immediately today and said, do I have a right of appeal against this uh, disposition? So I'm waiting for a response. Of course, it's the weekend now, isn't it? Tomorrow's, tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow's oh, well, they might respond tomorrow. And, and the, the strange thing is that they've worked together because tomorrow is a hearing in the Magistrates' Court. So we have the High Court giving its disposition on, on one day and the Magistrates' Court trying to get me the next day. It, it's just very, very strange. And I'm going to ask for an adjournment because this is just totally against the laws of, of ju judicial um, you know, prudence. It's against them. Does the Magistrates Court hearing require your presence in person? Because I think you're going to find it difficult to be there. Yeah, no, I, uh, luckily it's over video link, right? Okay, so it's at 10 o'clock tomorrow. And I'm just shocked by this, this inappropriate behaviour of the people who are meant to uphold our laws and, and justice in Australia. 